Okay, everybody, sounds like we have to do a little deeper dive on osmotic pressure, and that is perfectly fine uh, because this is tricky, and it's tricky, I think, primarily because we have uh, suddenly an environment where, lot, where the uh, decimals count a lot, and we've been able to ignore a lot of our decimal places thus far. So let's uh, look a little bit closer at the example we were looking at. We're trying to make normal saline. Uh, which has got to match the osmotic pressure of red blood cells. Otherwise, red blood cells will either shrivel up if uh, we have too high a concentration of saline and water leaves the red blood cells, or they will pop. Uh, so we have to match exactly the same uh, osmotic pressure. And reflect for a moment, please. 0.83 megapascals is eight times atmospheric pressure. So it is quite a lot of pressure. Like you, you know, you don't experience that every day. So uh, let's uh, try and solve this a little bit. So you'll notice I've written R out to the side and I picked the value of R that had megapascals in it so we can make this work. Um, we need a temperature and I didn't give you a temperature. Uh, I'm gonna pick a temperature that is reasonable in this case I'm going to pick 37 degrees C, and you're like, why, where the heck is that coming from? Uh, 37 degrees C is a body temperature in Celsius, so that's a relevant temperature for this setup. You'll find that temperature, eh, we'll get slightly different answers um, if we are using different temperatures, but... Uh, Temperature is not going to be as finicky as some of these other things we're dealing with. And we also need a molecular, or not molecular, a molar volume for water. And you're like, what do you mean by that? Well, let's see. Um, the volume of water, the volume of water here turns out to be a little bit tricky. So we're going to look at it for 35 degrees Celsius. And at 35 degrees Celsius, you can look this up on the steam table. It turns out water uh, has a water has a volume of 1. Point, let's get that back 1.006 centimeters cubed in one gram. And then we all recall, hopefully, that it's 18 grams in a mole for water which gives us 18.108 centimeters cubed per mole. So that's the volume we are going to use. And so we're going to pop all this into the calculator. And we have uh, 0.83 MPA uh, times 18.108. And this is all going to pick up a negative sign, 8.314. And and all of that's got to come together to equal the natural log of AW. And so we come out. If you feed that through, hit pause, do it yourself, be sure you believe me, uh, we get an AW of 0 0.994. And uh, I think a lot of folks doing this problem came to this point and sent me an email. And we're like, yo, Vigent, it's almost all water. Um, and that's true, but the answer is still going to surprise you when we finish doing the math. Remember, just a minute ago, like last week, you were working out the water, um, the water activity of various foods. And there's things that you think are solid that you eat on a regular basis that have an AW of 0.994. Like most oranges are really close to this water activity. So just because it seems like this is almost entirely water, um, yes, on a per mole basis, absolutely. But on a per mass basis, not necessarily. So we're going to work this through in, uh, in just a second here. The other thing that I need you to uh, think about is this is the correct answer for AW. And look at that. 
uh, osmotic pressure. Oh my gosh, um, we can get to an osmotic pressure that is eight times um, atmospheric pressure just by having water only be 99% of what's there. Um, no wonder it takes so much energy to use reverse osmosis to purify water, right? Like this is not an easy thing to do. Okay, so backing this up, let's figure out how much salt we're gonna need. Okay, so if we make a not quite ideal solution approximation, that means that 0.994 is the mole fraction of water. Uh, now, we're gonna use the same approximation we used when talking about food, which is then that one minus XW is then uh, X salt, except salt completely dissociates. So we only need to add half as much. So it's gonna be uh, the uh, X salt is equal to um, the, uh, the one minus XW over two, right? Because we only have to add half as, half as much because it's gonna completely dissociate. So now uh, we are gonna, okay, so let's get the uh, X salt is equal to zero, zero, two, nine, which seems like it's gonna be too small to do anything, but really, trust me, it's gonna work out. So you remember the mole fraction is defined as a number of moles of the thing of interest, so we'll say moles of salt, uh, divided by the total moles, which in this case is moles of salt plus moles of water. And in the problem statement, I said, you know, how much are we adding to make 100 milliliters of this? So uh, 100 milliliters, let's assume, and this is a good assumption, that salt has no real impact on the volume. So we just need to know how many uh, moles is in 100 milliliters of water, and we could work that out. I recommend you hit pause and go work it out for yourself. Uh, but it turns out to be 5.52 moles is, uh, that's NW. And so we are now gonna plug that in there and algebra at this to find N salt. So I really recommend you play along, go ahead, do it, um, work it out. Um, I've worked it out, I worked it out twice actually because I wanted to be really sure I got my numbers. Um, and I get uh, point, oops, ha ha ha, 0, 0.16. I know I can hit pause, I'm not gonna do it, 0, 0.16. Okay, and you're like, well, that's great. How much is that? Well, uh, sodium chloride has a molecular weight of 58.44 grams per mole. So I'm gonna multiply that by 58.44 grams per mole. And I come out with a mass of about 0 0.94 grams of salt. And that's into 100 mils. So that's about a gram. And if you go uh, look online for what people tell you to make for um, normal saline at home, uh, they'll tell you that you're adding about nine grams of salt into a liter of water. Oh, look, we just got that same answer. Oh my gosh, we are correct. And so that's, that's a real answer. And I know, you know, go back and look around, make sure you can do it and make sure, you know, talk yourself out of quitting once you hit the 0.994 for the activity of water. It looks like that stuff is all water. But if you threw a gram of salt, which is gram of salts, maybe a uh, half a teaspoon-ish, um, yeah, about half a teaspoon-ish. If you threw half a teaspoon of salt into 100 mils of water, which is not all that much water, you would not want to drink that. It would taste salty. Uh, it, would, it would be very different. And so 
Um, just because this looks like it's not much change. It is a, a meaningful change. It is a change that is measurable. Uh, and it's a change that um, really is important if you were uh, certainly going to use this to rinse out your eyes or uh, as, uh, as for any other sort of medical use. And so it doesn't take a lot of solute to uh, really change the behavior of a property, even though we're in this range where the stuff is seems like it ought to be basically pure water. All right, there you go. Enjoy. Talk to you later.